looking at Ari, while we've got a windy day, we've got a beautiful day for racing on a very challenging two mile road course featuring 14 very tough corners. Yeah, this track has a lot to offer. It's very bumpy, um, it's narrow. It's got a lot of very fast sections though. Um, uh, the biggest thing for me is the pavement changes. The car handles a lot differently on those concrete patches than on the asphalt. So we have a very challenging course, very different from Indy. So should be a spectacular race today. Esteban Guerrieri Ari coming in off of a big win at Indy. He comes from the back, goes to the front. He is now the championship leader and he's won two races in a row. Yeah, he's coming off some great momentum. He's also very quick. His teammate is on pole, so this should be an interesting race. Um, but Gary Airy definitely feeling like he's the man to beat right now. Speaking of his teammate, Oliver Webb, for the very first time on pole in Firestone Indy Lights action, he's with the third member of our broadcast team, Jake Query. Oliver Webb will start this race where you want to with the entire field behind you, your first career Firestone Indy Lights pole. Congratulations, your mindset now heading into this race at Belle Isle. Yeah, well, we had a really good qualifying, and it's hopefully it's hard to overtake here, so my mindset really is to try and pull a good gap in that one or two. Sam's team's done incredibly well. We're one, two, three, four. Sam's 50th pole, really happy to get it. My first pole this year in Indy Lights. Hopefully get a good gap, that one or two, and then we'll have to look after the tyres. It's a bumpy course. How physical will it be? It seems like it's the most physical qualifying I've had so far. Just in qualifying, we're only doing kind of three laps at a time, so we'll have to see how the race pans out. It's an hour or 40 laps, 45 laps, so it's... It's not quite as long as the Indy cars, but we're non-stop, no pit stops, so we'll uh, we'll see how who drops off or who doesn't. He will start in the front position, Will Oliver Webb. That's the same spot where his teammate Esteban Guerrieri finished back on Friday at the Freedom 100 in Indianapolis. Here's a look back. So on a beautiful day in Detroit, we get set to go racing race number five on this 2012 Firestone Indy Light schedule. Welcome to coverage on NBC Sports Network as. Uh, the cars circulating around should see the green flag this time by an Ari Leyendijk Jr. Uh, certainly now the tensions begin to grow just a bit. Not a huge field, only 13 cars here, but this is going to be a very competitive, very difficult, very physical 45 lap race. Yeah, I think the keys to this race are definitely you have to be aggressive. Street course, you have to very hustle the car a lot. Um, braking zones, very, very important to stay out front. It's very hard to pass here. Two very big brake zones in 8 and 13. And here we go. We're coming to the start. Oliver Webb, Tristan Vautier will bring them across the line. It's going to be Vautier who grabs the early lead. Ari is, he jumps out in front. Now here's the tricky part of this course. Got to get the flow going early here. Very tight turns here. And we're going to wait and see if we have anyone make any move. That's Esteban Guerrieri trying to get past here in turn number two. Yeah, make, Dem make Dempsey, yeah, Dempsey was trying to make the move there. Look at opening laps. It's very important to be aggressive here. Look at Savedra make the move down low on Jakobin. Jakobin's definitely falling back. Yeah, Sebastian Savedra, Ari did not have a good qualifying session. He was the quickest in the second practice session, but kind of disappeared during qualifying as Sebastian Saavedra goes off ninth. And now he is racing Gustavo Jakobin. Both of these drivers placed on probation by race directors after the way they raced each other at Indianapolis. Yeah, now Saavedra's lost a little bit of momentum. We see another driver making a move here. That's Ostella. Ostella on the outside. Saavedra will have the advantage going into turn eight. Yep, so David Ostella racing uh, Saavedra hard there as they go nose to tail through this section of the track. Ari eight nine and ten as they wind their way around the fountain area yeah this is all very tight you can notice a different pavement you go from concrete to asphalt and uh, the driver's definitely making you know quick use of the of the different terrain here and have to be very careful in setting up their cars for the different pavement changes. the right hander is turn number 13 and Ari what has seemingly been the trickiest turn this weekend for both Firestone Indy Lights and the Indy car drivers is turn number 14 that fast little jog through after you leave uh, the, the right hand that is 13 but uh, I tell you what Ari uh, race control had decided after Indy they were going to slap some of these drivers hands and Victor Carboni right now trying to pull up on the 77 car he's, he's got yeah, he's got a great run here here's on the ins he'll be on the inside for turn eight so he has the advantage right now as long as he can break just a little bit later yeah now so Ari as, as these guys now yeah. race each other hard on a course like this and you see Esteban Guerrieri Firestone Indy Lights on NBC Sports Network. It's the Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix. And Ari Lyon Dyke, while we were away working lap 14, a scary incident as we had a great battle shaping up for third place. And it's Peter Dempsey, as he had already cleared, made the, the pass as he went to third, and then working on second place, Victor Carboni. 
makes wheel to wheel contact Ari as uh, they were making the move uh, through turn 7A heading to turn number eight. Yeah, that's actually the quickest part of the race course where they touch there at about 160 miles an hour. Huge impact for Dempsey. And I gotta say, this all started back in turn seven. Dempsey's okay, he's out of the car after that huge impact. And, you know, it all sort of start started at turn seven. They were trying to get around a lap car of Unessi and it bunched up all over Webb and the driver Carbone and Dempsey were looking to pass, going into the to the best break zone, the best passing opportunity around the racetrack, and they touched, which was a huge impact. Cleanup is complete after the Dempsey incident. Peter Dempsey is okay. That's what we're happy to report. Esteban Guerrieri, our championship leader, did in fact make a pit stop during that extended yellow, and what was a 45-lap race has now become a timed race. You see at the top of your screen the race time remaining, just over 27 seconds as we are back to green flag action. Oliver Webb is going to break to the front, but now Gustavo Jakobin is right back in this thing. You see him in the yellow car as he currently runs fourth, Ari. Yeah, clean restart for everyone. Everyone's getting through single file here. Not, no moves being made, so I was a little surprised that Jakobin didn't make a move on the restart. Yep, uh, you see uh, the back-to-back the -back AFS Andretti Autosports cars as uh, it has been a, a less than perfect weekend for Sebastian Saavedra in that 27 car as Saavedra currently runs third, Ari, in the championship, but now, with the leaders in sight, if the car's got better, he's going to have the opportunity to run to the front. But the championship leader, you see another two or three spaces back as he, uh, Esteban Guerrieri, in the 11 car, continues to struggle just a bit. Oh, we got oh, no, pass. I thought it was a pass for Lee, but Webb here he comes. defended the bottom. Carbone looking on the inside. Is there enough room there? Very tight through here. Yeah, so uh, Victor Carbone tried on the outside, then made the move to the inside. Oh. Now he's going to go back to the inside. Teammates racing very close here through 9 and 10. Jakob and making a move. Great little move on the inside. Let's see if they can go up and under. This bunches everybody up. Look at the AFS teammates side by side. So we kind of expected to see Gustavo Jakobin here. So he'll make his way through 13. And now Gus has gone to third place. You can expect to see him try to make up some room now. Once again, as we come off of 14, another fast portion of this goal. Drives uh, the oh, extreme here we go. coil Pass drilling team more. And here he comes, uh, Gustavo Jakobin in that uh, that uh, it car, the extreme coil drilling team more racing Munoz. car we talked about. And he's going to move to second. And Munoz will come with him. So Carboni, are right, just like that, shuffle from second to fourth. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Belle Isle. It's Firestone Indy Lights on NBC Sports Network. You've got a battle for the lead. Gustavo Jakobin. Look at that, Ari, as he faked to the outside, then moved oh, to the inside. Our it. first lead change here today. Very great pass. He had them all set up going into eight and then didn't happen, and he cut underneath, and this was a very difficult pass to pass the place. Right now, there's Alain Day in car number nine. Kind of a, a, a difficult situation for Alain Day after qualifying, Ari, because he was scheduled to start in the top four but they found in post-qualifying tech that there was a problem with the rear wing. He was shuffled all the way back, had to start ninth. So uh, Alain Day also losing his teammate Jorge Goncalves to an incident earlier onboard fire on the engine destroyed part of uh, Goncalves' car, and Goncalves is unable to start here today. Lights, but Ari, let's remember that all of these drivers, this is the first visit by Firestone Indy Lights to this layout here at Bell Isle Park. Yeah, this is the first visit, and we, uh, we saw that Sh Sam Schmidt had very good cars in qualifying, first through fourth. And now as the race has worn on, those cars have fallen off a little bit. Jakobin's Team War machine has definitely shown to be the best car on track. So just about four and a half minutes remaining. As for our championship leaders, well, Esteban Guerrieri, who had went back-to-back -back at Long Beach in Indianapolis right now, just can't seem to get to, into the top five. Uh, Ari, is, uh, he sits right now sixth. Uh, Tristan Vautier, who came in second in the championship, right now runs fifth, just in front of Gary Airy and Sebastian Saavedra, third in the championship, runs seventh. So all of those cars, and there's Esteban Gary Airy right now running just in front of Sebastian Saavedra. Well, it looks like the white flag will be displayed to the field this time by again. Uh, this turned into a timed race after uh, when we were working lap 14. Peter Dempsey with a huge shunt as uh, he got up and over the rear tire of Victor Carbone and made contact, heavy contact, in turn number eight. We're just happy to report that Peter Dempsey is okay. Here he is, Gustavo Jakobin. He has been impressive today, worked his way through the field, and he'll come through turn 13 and 14 and now work his way uh, to the white flag for the final lap of this race. Gus was really happy when he won for the very first time, and there it is. Paul Blevin will wave the white flag. He was really happy when he won at Baltimore, and I've got to assume 
that he is really going to be pleased with uh, the way he was able to handle himself here today when he gets out of the car. Now, when you're a driver and you're coming to the white flag like this, he's got a little bit of a gap, but Munoz is not very far behind, so you don't want to make any big mistakes. You want to make sure you come off of the very important turn seven, which leads onto the straightaway quickly because that is going to be Munoz's best chance for a pass. Well, you've got the veteran running in front of the rookie. Uh, Munoz, uh, as we told you, started seventh. Uh, both of these drivers hailing from Columbia. So uh, right now, Colombian drivers have been very strong in Firestone Indian Lights this year. But you're right, Ari. I tell you what, Munoz, Munoz is pedaling hard here on this final lap. He has significantly narrowed the lead that uh, Gustavo Jakobin had uh, coming to the white flag. Now, this is all very tight here, 10, 11, 12. This is going to be the corner right here. Coming into 12, he needs to get through here quickly because 13 is another passing opportunity, and he looks like he might have a run. Boy, look at this. Munoz. He's going to try to come to the inside. He's not close enough yet. This is 13, the right-hander, Ari, and suddenly we've got a race to the checkered flag. Very, very close here. These drivers are pedaling hard. Munoz is putting his head down for sure. Coming Through the 14, here's the final run to the checkers. Carlos Munoz made it interesting in the end, Ari. But Gustavo Jakobin holds on and wins it by 16 hundredths of a second. A pair of Colombians battling hard to the checkered flag. If he was going to make it interesting there in the end, makes up a lot of ground, but just not quite enough. And it looks like Gustavo Jakobin has decided that he needs a donut break after this race. <laughs> He's got the crepes and waffles on the side of the car, and now he needs to make some donuts. Yep, so uh, then, he, then he thought better of it <laughs> as, as, as he tried to light him up and then thought, no, you know what? I'm going to take her to victory lane. Gustavo Jakobin celebrates at Belle Isle Park, the winner. This will be an incredibly popular victory. He came into victory circle and did so with the flag of his native country for the second time. The man from Columbia, Gustavo Jakobin is a winner and the firestone indy lights his first win came of course a year ago in baltimore the streets of baltimore and now here at Belle isle park in detroit gustavo yakaman has won and first and foremost let me say congratulations welcome back to victory circle and that was a heck of a pass for the lead man i i i i got no words it was an insane race uh i wasn't fired but it was it hadn't been because of all these guys you know all these guys they're part they're part of all this car they built it from scratch they've done a great job you know i don't know where mike culliver is my engineer but man he's a wizard and and i, I cannot do anything of this without them so this is a team more extreme coil drilling and crepes and waffles team victory i guess it is man it were we work as a team we lose as a team and we win as a team and i really i i i cannot thank this guys enough for for the great race car they gave me today. Part of an excitable run for the Freedom 100 in Indianapolis, and now an excitable driver, Gustavo Jakobin, a winner again in the Firestone Indy Lights. And Gustavo Jakobin is the race winner. That means through five races in 2012, he becomes the fourth different driver to climb to the top step of the podium. Carlos Munoz, a great drive, particularly that final lap as he closed the gap dramatically, just not quite enough to get him in 12 or 13. Webb winds up, uh, Oliver Webb winds up uh, running third, then Victor Carboni. Tristan Vautier winds up fifth, then Esteban Guerrieri, our championship leader, uh, coming into this event at Bell Isle. Esteban Guerrieri will be uh, P1, uh, followed by Tristan Vautier and Sebastian Saavedra. Uh, but it was Gustavo Jakobin with the win climbing into fourth as he picks up a spot. Now we'll be going to Milwaukee, which is a completely different experience for these guys. Their second oval of the year on the tight one-mile circuit.